Hi, Super Spruce here, back with another Antimatter Dimensions Reality Update video, episode 17. And you can see I can gain a lot of time theorems. That's 50 time theorems right there. And E74 eternity points. It's almost enough for four eternity point multipliers. Not quite enough. But that is okay because it looks like I'm, I'm still going to be able to get quite far. Should be able to get up to at least E75. I Not not quite E80 eternity points, but it's going to get me something. And now I have even more time theorems. The eventual goal is to have enough time theorems for Eternity Challenge 10, which is the last Eternity Challenge in a while. Of course, there'll be Eternity Challenge 11 and 12 later on, but those are still kind of far away at this point. So that's why I'm just getting time theorems. Eventually, I can also get enough time theorems to do Eternity Challenge 9 with Time Study 181. So that will be that will be pretty nice, but we're not we're not quite there yet. So E80 eternity points right there. And I mean, there's not much else to say. And get more time theorems. It's really just the same thing over and over again. So to switch it up, maybe next run, I'm gonna respec and go for Eternity Challenge 7. Because I can now I can do it with 181. Requirement is easy, and hopefully I'll be able to make it all the way. So I can get E84 Eternity Points. Just buy two of these, buy as many of these as I can get, and I guess buy Time Theorems. And then just do my standard Eternity Challenge 7 build, which just uses the regular Antimatter Dimensions. I also keep forgetting to use 121. Maybe I should start using idle instead of active, whatever. That just means I can get even more eternity points later on. And yeah, E17 under antimatter. This should be, hopefully, be pretty easy. As I need E4120 infinity points. I have time study 181, so I don't really need to crunch. And, ooh. That's not a good sign. It just hard walled. So I still can't do this challenge, which is kind of interesting. Um, what do I go for instead? Is there any challenge nine? I could try doing that. I could also try grinding more infinity points because we're not infinity points, eternity points. I keep mixing up the two because how of how I keep forgetting. That's time study 121. Who needs eternity challenges to progress? Um, that's E87 eternity points right there. And maybe maybe I can get I can push all the way up to E90. I'm also one run away from being able to do eternity challenge 9 with time study 181. So there's 10 additional time theorems, 12 additional time theorems, 14. Maybe I should stop counting. 16. I want I want to get to E90 e Eternity Points, so that, that's 18 right there. That's two multiplier upgrades, a bunch of the time dimension stuff, and I don't really need any more time theorems because I'm still far away from Eternity Challenge 10, and I've basically have maxed out everything before Eternity Challenge 10. So I think the strategy now is to do Eternity Challenge 9. And I, I can do it, I can start right here, so, well, let's see, I need E2250 infinity points, that is super easy, I can probably do the next completion as well, which is kind of crazy, so that that's what I'm going to do, because it's apparently that easy. So here we go again, and it is going to be almost just as easy as last completion, so... 2480, 2490. Looks like I wall at around this point, but I can still beat the challenge relatively easily. So now what do I do? So I could do Eternity Challenge 8. I probably, you know, I still think the best strategy is just to grind more Eternity Points and Time Theorems. Because Eternity Challenge 8 is still a pain. Eternity Challenge 7 keeps 
is still impossible. This is still impossible. So th there's really not much else I can do. So yeah, this is this is quite powerful. I can get almost I can get over 60 time theorems right there and go all the way to E96 eternity points. So I'm probably a single run away from being able to unlock Eternity Challenge 10 for the first time. And when I unlock Eternity Challenge 10, I will when I complete that for the first time, that means I will be able to do everything beyond Eternity Challenge 10. Or not not do everything. I can start getting the time studies below Eternity Challenge 10. And that that is pretty big right there. So there it is, 529 time theorems. I might, might need to do one more run, but I can get up to E101 at 30 points. This is where this starts scaling. The time dimensions are also going to... Actually, they're not going to scale. It's just, it's just the multiplier that scales at this point. So I think I, I will do one more run. I don't even really need to respec anything because I'm, I'm just going to try to go straight into the challenge when I can get there, and yeah, E100, I can get more infinity points. So now I finally have enough time theorems to unlock the challenge. Turn to challenge 10. Time dimensions and infinity dimensions are disabled. Again, immense boost to infinities from, and or boost from infinities to antimatter dimensions. Okay, so I can't really use the I, I can't really use the time dimension path here. I have to go normal dimension. So I, I will just respec like this. Um, so just, I don't even need any of the time dimension boost things. Just go with the antimatter dimension path. I don't know if I want to go active or idle, considering it's going to involve a lot of crunching because how it's based on infinities. I probably get to go active. That gives me more infinity points. And yeah, so this means I need to crunch a lot. And it's it's just the same old infinity grinding again. Well, actually, I don't even need to do that because I just got, I literally just got enough eternity point, infinity points to complete the challenge for the first time. So the regular reward is a time dimension multiplier based on infinities. And that isn't even that powerful. The real reward of this challenge, of course, is the time studies below Eternity Challenge 10. So this op this opens up like a whole new world. And I'm not really sure what I want to go for immediately. Um, this this is kind of useless at this point. Um, this is powerful. This is really nice quality of life stuff. And this, well, I'll, I'll at least go this because I'm pretty close to be able to get both 213 and 214 in one go. So that, that's what I'm going to do. I can easily gain a whole bunch of time theorems. I can almost gain enough to get 214 right here. And this should hopefully, yeah, it's going to give me a lot of time theorems. And now I'm probably just going to stay with this build for a while and and get a whole bunch of eternity points. So after all this, I can gain... That looks like over 150 time theorems. It's not enough to get anything, though, because now the time studies are very expensive. And individual time theorems don't really matter at all at this point. It's really about getting, like, lots of them at once. So now what do I want to do? Maybe with this, I'll be able to get Attorney Challenge 7 finally complete for once. <laughs> Took this far. But there's another thing that unfortunate, is an unfortunate reality, no pun intended, that you have to suffer with. And this is, of course, eternity grinding. I don't know why I respect my time studies. I didn't really need to do that. But, well, anyway, I, I think I just want to do this. And basically, I need to grind my eternities all the way to... All the way to one million eternities. The reason the reason for this is because of time study 193. It's an antimatter dimension multiplier based on eternities. So basically what I need to do 
is go to automation, go to this, and just spam this. And I'm surprised this isn't faster, but it seems like it's about, I can get like eight-ish per second. And that really is all I can do at this point. I can't, I can't even spend any more time theorems. Maybe I should go with a different path here, but I don't think it's going to matter that much. Even holding M, holding M is not going to matter at all. It doesn't matter in, in eternity stage. I can get, I guess I can get these, but that's all I can actually do. So yeah, it's going to, it's going to take a long time. Even though I have the three times eternity boost, I'm getting like, is, is there is there a good way to see how many eternities I'm getting per second other than just looking here and trying to eyeball it? Let's, let's see. One, two. It's like, yeah, about 50 eternities per second. So that means to get the 900,000 additional eternities I need, it's going to take like four to five hours. So... It's, un it's unfortunate, but it shouldn't be as bad as the infinity grinding because the offline actually seems to work. So, yeah, 1.2 E5 per hour. That's eight hours and I'll be there. So, yeah, see it in that time. Okay, I'm finally back two days later, and basically I was struggling to get the offline progression to work because... I like turned off my computer and then I came back the next day and it didn't give me any offline progression. And then I was like, okay, let's suck it up. Let's do most, let's do all of it online. And I got up to like 850,000 eternities. And then I tried again to do offline progression and it worked this time. That's why I, I have way overshot my eternities. I'm still glad I got the upgrade to eternities in reality. So. Now that I never have to deal with this until next reality, which is an unfortunate reality, I can actually get more eternity points. I have capped this study at E13,000. So this means I'm going to get basically, yeah, a lot more eternity points and just a lot more everything. So that's what I'm going to do. This actually isn't all that powerful, at least right now, but maybe when I start going into eternity challenges, I, I have a lot of time theorems I can use. And I, I can almost do eternity challenge 9 with this build, which is crazy. And I can keep gaining even more eternity points. I should probably go into eternity challenges at this point. Because, yeah, 430 time theorems. It should be super easy to do the rest of the challenges I haven't knocked out quite yet. So... Eternity Challenge 9. Let's do that one first, actually. That one shouldn't be too bad. So let's start the challenge. Yep, yeah, look at that. That that was the easiest challenge I've ever seen. So, actually, no. I'm, I'm going to do... I'm going to go into the regular Antimer Dimensions build for the last one. Last completion of Eternity Challenge 7. And this is going to be super easy. Especially, you know, with 181 and this. I probably don't even need to get more, but we just need E40, 120, infinity points, and boom. Easiest challenge. Maybe not as easy as before. And now I could do either Attorney Challenge 10 or Attorney Challenge 8. I'm going to do Attorney Challenge 8 at the moment. And it shouldn't be too bad, especially with something like this study. So, here we go. I need E4000. Yeah, this is just... This challenge is a joke. With study 193, the rest of the pre-eternity challenge 10 challenges are a complete joke. Here's the last completion. E4900. You can complete it in literally less than a second. And now, I think I should go for eternity challenge 10. So, this... I can still use 193, but I can't do as much as before. So, I'm just going to use 193, and the challenge is super easy yet again. So, 
I'm going to do the same thing again. But this time, I probably want... I can, I can either get 213 or 214. I have literally exactly enough for 213. Um, so I'm going to do that. I need E3600 infinity points. I can get all the way up to E3750. And that's without any infinity grinding. So maybe now I just get more eternity points. I just knocked out a whole bunch of challenges very quickly. So yeah, let's do that. So here's E168 eternity points which is enough for several of these multipliers and i can get a lot more time theorems i probably want to this one's kind of useless for now but once i can start getting something like 212 that's going to be very powerful and i can get 211 as a bonus and this is going to give me yeah a, a crap ton of eternity points this this is basically the inflation era of eternity where i just get a lot of eternity points every run and especially with the reality glyph boost, it's gonna it's gonna be even more powerful than usual. So I'm just gonna do these runs. It's really just the same run, except I'm getting like 20 additional orders of magnitude of eternity points every single run. And I still can't really afford any more time time studies because they're so expensive at this point. E250 eternity points. 590, 648 time theorems. I'm getting pretty close to like to the 192. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the best strategy in this part of the game is. I I think I know 232 is very powerful, so I'm gonna I'm going to go for that. And I don't really need to know the strategy all that much because this part of the game is so fast it doesn't even require much of a strategy. So I'm 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 gonna get this. I'm actually what I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, I'm gonna save this as number two. This will be like my more long-term progression. I know 224 is worse than 223 at the moment, but it becomes better later on, and not even that much later on. So this is E298 eternity points, and then I'm I'm gonna be able to get E308 next run. Yeah, here it is. E317 eternity points. This means there is another scaling at this. Is there a scaling for time dimensions as well? There is another scaling for time dimensions. So this will slow down progression somewhat. So maybe I do need a little bit of a strategy. Actually never mind, I'm already at 500 time theorems. I can get I can get the best time study in the late in the late time study tree, which is 232. And yeah, I literally recoup my 500 time theorems and more just like that. So maybe now I want to go for 192 and one and two one. You can see four e four hundred and twelve attorney points. It's not enough for the attorney point multiplier, but it's enough for some of the time dimensions and a crap ton of time theorems. Which means one ninety two. Which means that I can get more than e three oh eight replicanti. That's that's gonna help. But I really want to get two oh one. You can also see I'm up to E28 million antimatter. E432 eternity points is enough to start getting all of the time dimension things again. And I'm getting pretty close to time steady 201. So I think maybe I can do something like... I can do the last two completions of Eternity Challenge 10 because it's going to be a lot easier now. So let's just knock these out real quick. Super easy. Load. And then go back to Eternity Challenge 10 and do that super easy again that is all eternity challenges at least up to 10 11 and 12 are different and those will be later so yeah hope you enjoyed peace out